everybody and thank you for joining us today on another episode of Ask the Expert. Today I am joined by the lovely Tim Richmond. Hi Tim. Hi, hello. Uh, hello and Tim works for Wandsworth Sensory Support Services and he is a lead specialist uh, visual impairment teacher and a lead for their Perry team. Um, and uh, what I'm going to start by asking you Tim is can you describe your role, what you do for the company please? Yep, sure, no problem. Um, so at Wandsworth, we have um, a sensory support team that includes hearing impairment, but also the vision impairment and habilitation services. So um, the specialist QTVIs, the qualified teachers of the vision impairment, we have outreach roles and I lead that team and we all have a caseload of pupils in schools in Wandsworth and our habilitation specialists provide the sort of mobility orientation independent living skills um, support as well. So I oversee the whole team. Wow. So it's, it's a lot of responsibility and it's a massive role. And obviously you're covering a lot of area as well. Yeah. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Wow. So, so how long have you actually been in this role? Uh, in this particular role for about six years. Yeah. Right. Um, it, it's evolved over, over the years. Um, I started with vision impairments in the 1990s. Uh, being placed as a supply teacher at Linden Lodge School, which is where our service is based. It's a yeah. very well-known vision impairment school mm. and, uh, and things developed from there. Brilliant. And, and I mentioned, I think when we've had previous discussions on the phone in the past, you mentioned something about sports. Is yeah, so, yeah, yeah I, um, I taught in Linden Lodge um, back in the 1990s science curriculum. And then I evolved into a PE teacher, which was part of my, training back in Australia and uh, ended up being the head of the PE department for many, many years through the, wow. through the years of leading up and through the 2012 Paralympics, which was a great time. Blimey, so you've got so a we, lot of skills there, crikey. We had a lot of, a lot of fun in those times because we were sort of heavily involved in VI sports and mm -hmm. part of the 2012 Paralympics and on, we were on TV programs and all sorts on Channel 4. It was great fun. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. That's brilliant. So, so talking about, obviously, you mentioned Lyndon Lodge, which obviously we all know is um, a specialist VI school has been running for years. Um, so what difference can you expect between a standard school and obviously a vision impairment school? Um, right. So a place like Lyndon Lodge, um, they are few and far between specialist schools for, um, for sensory needs. And Lyndon Lodge, um, like all specialist schools, had to evolve because originally they would provide a very mainstream curriculum with qualifications and that did evolve over the course of the last two decades into um, providing places for pupils who would find it tricky to be able to maintain and progress in mainstream. So those with additional needs, whether they be physical um, or additional learning needs, um, those children um, would tend to be the client group at Linden Lodge. However, the difference is that you do have specialist teaching. The, uh, the vision impairment specialism is embedded in a place like Linden Lodge. So those sorts of specialist provisions, they have mandatory qualifications. So it's mandatory that every teacher teaching in a school for vision impairment has the postgraduate qualification. So you have that real specialism as the seam running through the school. So you can... Uh, expect that um, all access is provided, resourcing that's appropriate to their needs is always there. In mainstream, you're a child who has a vision impairment in a mainstream setting, you rely on an advocate such as a VI teacher, a QTVI such as myself. You rely on their, their advocacy to help support the school and the family and the young person to make sure that all their access requirements are, are taken care of. Yeah, whether that be technology needs, um, 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 you know, access in the classroom across the whole curriculum. Mm. So it actually goes much further than just from the classroom and the support that you're offering to your students as well. Absolutely yeah. right. It goes down to social and emotional well-being. Um, it's not just about access to learning. Um, it's supporting a young person learning to access. And there's a real difference, you know. Um, mm. Providing access to learning is that provision of the, of the technology, um, whether it be low tech or or high tech, it could be just you know magnifiers. It could be it could be mm. you know digital devices, um, mainstream devices such as iPads. Um, yeah. But then it's supporting the pupil to learn to access um, as independently as possible. 
as well as those other streams of, you know, independent living skills, getting around safely, independently. Uh-huh. Yep. So it's the full, the full package of support. That's brilliant to know that somebody can actually obviously attend the school and they know they're going to get that support from start to finish and it's never going to end. Um, so sure. I mean, the, the ultimate start- goal is, though, the ultimate goal would be to okay. ensure wherever possible self-advocacy um, for the young person is mm-hmm. embedded by the time they're, they're moving away from secondary and into further education or employment. Yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. So, so being a VI teacher, um, what extra skills do you think you need to have? Oh, um, we well, certainly need to have patience and um, good sense of humour <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. uh, and empathy, for sure. Um, yeah. But obviously you need to have the skill set. You need to be really up to date with um, technology now. I mean, it's all about technology now, isn't it? Let's face it. Um, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And yeah. so that's, that's the biggest thing that we have to continually um, make sure we're on top of. So we'll, wherever possible, we'll be collaborating with organisations such as Optilec um, to make sure we're aware of what the available devices are so that we yeah. can then pr- promote them accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it comes with, um, obviously, not everybody suffers from the same eye condition. So exactly we try right. to accommodate our tech to whatever eye condition they have. And obviously, you'll experience that a lot yourself, having to deal yeah. with you know, the different sight losses and kind of accommodating your teaching skills to, to their eye condition. Mm, absolutely so, right. Yeah, definitely yeah. right. So that's one of the main um, aspects in, in the initial phases for us is to, mm. is to make sure that um, the hospitals, the eye hospitals and the ophthalmologists and ourselves have communication, that we're aware of the eye conditions, we're aware of um, any updates, what's going on with the vision of the young person. So we, we do cultivate relationships with all the hospitals that have eye specialists. Um, that's, a, that's an aspect of our job which we consider very important. Yeah, yeah. Not, so- not, not, not only for early intervention for young, mm-hmm. the young people to make sure there's referrals to our service um, at the earliest mm-hmm. possible stage, but ongoing as well. Yeah. yeah, well, you kind of partially answered my next question because um, obviously we, we've gone through what you can offer the students, but um, I know you offer um, support to other teachers as well and, and like you say, other schools. So as, as sure. one, do you go and visit those other schools and, and provide Yeah, definitely, services? yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's really important that we provide training. Um, so we definitely make sure that all staff in schools where there's a pupil with vision impairment, they have training offered to them on vision impairments generally and how to, how to include the young person with vision impairment, but then also the specific requirements of children in their school. So the staff that are teaching that young person need to know how that young person sees, what the education implications of the visual needs are, yep, and what, um, what equipment and resources they require, and then how to actually provide those resources. And that's the biggest part. It's to really handhold them through learning how to use the equipment, um, the assistive mm-hmm. technology. Yep. So we'll, we will provide training on the assistive technology um, to make sure that it's being used in, in class. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the main thing, isn't it? You can you can get all this great tech, and then but you've got to have the knowledge, obviously, how to use it. And it, a lot of the things aren't that difficult to use, to be fair. Yeah. But um, the fact that you do provide that training as well that that goes above and beyond. And I know yeah, so- that obviously we, we we've just literally spoken about um, school holidays and and going above and beyond. Yeah. But obviously the school holidays are coming up, but things don't quite cut off for you, do they? Not no, yet. not <laughs> no, not really. We we do need to make sure we're preparing for the inset training as soon as um as soon as school's back yeah and uh and obviously referrals don't stop coming in from hospitals so um we, we continue to engage with families through holidays um because they may be wanting things through the holidays as well so we'll we'll help them through whether it be downloading digital books or mm-hmm. um you know requiring large print books and just needing some help with those sorts of things yep yeah. mm-hmm. or just making initial contacts yeah, yeah lovely and, and you personally are you planning to take a break definitely yeah but i'll kind of be on call but yeah i'll definitely have a break yeah yep. super, super super well on that yeah. note i'm going to thank you very much for taking your time out today to speak to us tim and um, no i hope you do take a break and um i hope everything goes on the six weeks holidays for you thanks that's very kind All right. thank you take care thank Cheers. you okay bye bye bye